Ooh, recording in progress. I will, I will never get used to that voice. Never. Oh my God. Never. Um, all right. What's up everybody. Welcome back to tuck rule takes podcast. Uh, as I mentioned, the self-proclaimed soon to be nationally recognized, nationally proclaimed greatest Patriots podcast out there. Um, I like to think we're, I see, see two, two believers here will be, we got, I like to call us the Jacoby Myers of Patriots podcast, (laughs) kind of of low expectations going in, but you know, we're going to exceed whatever your expectations are. So unless unless they're too high, like, let's not, I mean, come on, this is only our third, third episode. And we're not saying Jacoby Myers is really that that fantastic either. We're just, it's a, it's a comparison. (laughs) I have shit. I might be by the time, <laughs> by the time week one starts, I'm going stir crazy. Um, I'm Mike Sullivan, obviously with me as always, Patriots partner, Liam McDade. Liam, I always tell you to say hi to the people. So say hi to the people. What is up everyone? How are you? <laughs> um, so since the last time we spoke, um, well, on a public thing like this, the Patriots played a football game, a real life, uh, how real life football. Game. It is. It was awesome. I kind of. I, I think we're still going to count it, even though they played a team that doesn't even have a freaking name. Yeah. Um, compensation but, prize. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the the fighting Fitzpatrick's. I guess that's what we'll, that's what we'll call <laughs> they, them. For it's a better name they than should... the God. That'd be <laughs> yeah, so the... hunted. God. Um. So yeah, uh, Liam. I'm assuming you watched the game. Actually, I know you watched the game. Uh, what do you think? What do you think of finally seeing the Patriots out there? Um, I think they looked slightly messy. Uh, it was, I mean, first preseason game, I guess that's kind of to be expected, but there were just a lot more mistakes than I expected being at training camp. Uh, the first couple of days I didn't make every training camp, but like I said, in the last show, I made plenty of them. Humble brag. Yeah. No, brag. no flex there whatsoever. <laughs> just, uh, I think, um, I saw a team that Bill Belichick brutalized everyone who made a mistake would have to take a lap around the field he was very critical there weren't many offsides there weren't many mistakes in camp and then all of a sudden we get into a game situation maybe the nerves get going again hey the season's starting people are a little fiery but there were some mistakes i uh the blocking for the starters was a little questionable isaiah win got absolutely molested by chase young and then let <laughs> him decapitate cam newton so he I did. Hope, that was rough that was really bad so i hope isaiah win is taking out and filing charges against chase young and doing whatever he can to make right that wrong because that was absolutely <laughs> fucking brutal i was I so excited that. oh, oh my god was so, i was like oh. happened like that too you blink you miss it you're like damn that dude's fast so quick yeah i i forgot honestly that chase young was well i guess i, I didn't forget i guess it just it was kind of in the back of my mind and and I saw yeah. that and when it first happened I was like god damn it Cam like get the ball out and I was like oh he's got freaking Chase Young breathing yeah. down his back on his blind side so that was yeah. all of 0.6 <laughs> seconds you're like holy shit that was fast it was like in an instant and it was so good I saw people all over uh I was gonna say social media but it's it's Twitter people are on Twitter. yeah it's Twitter. like oh Cam like look at this day I mean man, and I'll I'll criticize Cam as much as you know the next guy but that you can't you can't blame him for that yeah that's, no to someone coming from your blind side, and it's not just anybody, it's Chase Young. Like that's that's the most vulnerable on. position a quarterback can have. Yeah, I don't care if that's Tom Brady out there, I don't care, Joe Montana, anyone you put out there, Chase Young is still getting up there and RKOing them just like he did Cam Newton. Imagine if he did, if he just if, if just he RKO'd up, like just RKO'd him face to the like, turf, everyone's out like, of oh nowhere. God. <laughs> oh my god, that would be and imagine if that's the way like Cam gets knocked. Oh my god, that would be that would be insane. <laughs> throws cam's lifeless carcass into the stands we're like holy shit uh, pins them one two three <laughs> throws them in yeah. Matt jones runs Our, in with a chair the rest, yeah. <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome <laughs> but yeah uh, no so those are my those are my early opinions opinions it was very messy uh i liked the quarterback play that i saw from even brian hoyer but mac jones yeah. brian hoyer they both look good but i mean is there anyone to talk about other than ramondre stevenson that I mean, dude I, was a house. That, that was that was pretty much what I mean. I, I mean, other than I know Mac Jones, he had his eleven straight, you know, completions and whatnot. But I mean, it's preseason, so that, yeah. You know, and take the, that a lot of them were dink and dunks. Like he checked exactly. Out a lot. Yeah, which I mean, he, he had that one pass everybody's talking about. That what's his name Wilkerson down, uh, down the left sideline. Uh, Christian Wilkerson yeah. messed up. Yeah, but hey, yeah, beautiful which, pass. He screwed that up. But exactly. I mean, I mean, you got to think if it was you know the regular season, he's throwing that to Aguilar, or Bourne, or you know the aforementioned soon to be great Jacoby Myers. Yep, so, you know, I mean, either way, like he still looks good, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. But like you said, 
Ramondre Stevenson, this guy, like I, I remember when they drafted him, the word coming out was that he was like LeGarrette Blunt, but he could catch. So, I mean, right off the bat, I was, I mean, I was sold. I was like, that's I'll take amazing. 20. Like, yeah, yeah perfect. At, at least because I, everybody liked LeGarrette Blunt. And if you get a blunt that can catch, like, let's go. So, but then you started to hear all the, um, like Ivan Fears was saying, the running backs coach that, you know, he's got everything to learn. You know, what am I happy about? I'm happy he's here. That's it. And it's like, Jesus, buddy, like <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. But then he comes in and, you know, rushes for you know over a hundred yards, two touchdowns. He had that magical, and I don't throw that term around loosely, magical 91 yard run. I mean, like i mean i don't care if it was preseason i was i was cheering like that oh, was 100%. i screamed it was I, regular. like i said i bet on the game and that was the game ceiling <laughs> touchdown so I, I just needed them to run out the clock i was like he got a first down he got a lot more he's going going gone and gone and gone he had the speed too that was it like i yeah. thought i mean the, the dude's built like a like a brick shit house like i thought yeah. that he was going to get caught or, or something but i mean you could you could just tell you know, he's, he's running. First of all, have you seen this dude's legs? He is. It looks like fridges. A massive man. I do want to ask him though, you know, Mr. Ramondre, have you ever heard of Exo gun? That's kind of my question. I want to ask him. Yeah. Cause I know I normally really ask you, I ask that. other people, you know, if he hasn't, I would tell him, Hey, Ramondre, have you ever done a workout and you need a massage after? I'm sure you have. You look like you work out a little bit. Well, let just me tell you this, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Just a tad. Um, <laughs> he dabbles in the working out area. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, just, just, I mean, just a little bit. His legs are built like tree trunks. Yeah. So, but if he did ever want a massage without leaving his house or his soon-to-be mansion when he gets his hundred million dollar contract, um, would do I would tell him, don't let the pain or soreness <laughs> slow you down. Uh, Exogun revives those giant leg muscles. It boosts your circulation, also releases energy so you can recover faster and live better. Take it wherever you need it. Work the gym, the trail. Which, I mean, I don't know who's who's taking the Exogun on the trail, but you know, if that's what you do. Go ahead, put the power of percussion massage treatment in your hands, portable, adjustable, powerful. Uh, Exogun's trusted by the pros, so maybe Stevenson already knows about this. Um, like I said, you can use it for percussion therapy, <laughs> drums, that's what percussion is. Um, I was a trumpet player in school. I didn't uh, play the You got drums. beat up a lot? Uh, no, I was actually like one of the cool, tr I know it's like an oxymoron, the cool, <laughs> yeah, players, yeah. but that, that Liam, this is not about me though. This is about Exocon in their percussion therapy, not trumpet therapy, um, percussion <laughs> therapy. Like I said, it is a series of everybody's favorite part, rapid, concentrated, pulsating strokes. You can gain back control of your body and achieve long-term pain relief with Exogun. Get 10%, 10%, 10% off with the codes. CGS10 at checkout comes with a charger and a carrying case as well. Get your exo gun today. Uh, get yourself a massage at a moment's notice. Now with Stevenson, just to kind of touch on him real quick or finish touching on him that will not finish. Not you, but th this, this is like a, a weirdly like sexual podcast. Turns <laughs> yeah, into, it is very which, like, <laughs> just wait, just wait until good things start happening during the regular season. You start out with rapid pulsating strokes. Oh my we get God. To touch it on players. Oh God. Then before I'm sure after, you know, after week one, we're going to be like, Oh my God, did you see Cam <laughs> Newton just bust through the line? <laughs> like, God. Oh my goodness. He really busted. Um, he just boom. He, the hole was there. <laughs> and Liam, let me tell you, he, Filled that puppy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, oh Christ! Yeah. What so, you anyways, though, what I did want to, what I did want to, uh, kind of something I was thinking about as I was watching that game, the Washington football game. Stevenson, as we know, he's a rookie, and I wanted to ask you because this is actually one thing that we haven't really spoke about there. Um, but you know, Sony Michelle, this is his last season, most likely with the Patriots. Yeah. What, what do you think is going to happen with them? Because I think everybody else is kind of solidified. You got James White, who our personal favorite, he's, mm -hmm. he's got a roster spot. Sweet feet, baby. JJ Taylor. That, exactly. <laughs> JJ uh, Taylor, little bowling ball, cannonball guy. He's going to return kicks, probably get handoffs. And you got Damian Harris, but Sonny Michelle, Sony Michelle, PlayStation, Sony and Stevenson. What, what do you think is going to happen with that? I, I think s somebody has to go. And it seems like the odd man out is clearly Sonny Michelle. And I don't mean go like they're going to cut him in the preseason. That's that's obviously nonsense. No, no, and I don't think that either. If his contract is up at the end of this year, he has to be shipped away by the trade deadline. I mean, we're not just going to let him walk away for nothing. But the 
Patriots really have a loaded backfield. Like I, it's hard for me to imagine any other team that has as many capable running backs as the Patriots do. No, like we, we are like loaded. five deep. It's ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like five quality, like, you know, very, you see, here we go again. We are cocked, locked and loaded. So deep back there. Very like that, deep. See, it's just, see, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just like, strokes. it goes that way. Exogun. Um, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think, like you said, they're gonna, they're gonna end up getting rid of Michelle. I don't think that he's going to get cut. I feel like he'd have to really screw up in order for them to cut yeah, him before, of course, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. things start going. I think, they end up kind of show well, not, maybe not showcasing him, but he's definitely going to be the second running back in the backfield to kind of start the season. Cause I think they're going to want to showcase him a little bit more just to get whatever they can for, him. which again, kind of like the same situation to kill Harry is in. Why would teams want to give up anything for them anyway? Because if you kind of assume the player is going to be available in the off season, but Maybe you have, I don't know, a playoff contender, Super Bowl contender that needs a back. Michelle is still good. I know he gets a lot of hate. Um, you know, I never in, understood the hate he gets either. Me, me neither. I was kind of uh I was kind of going back and forth with uh one of our one of our coworkers here at Coach Guy Sports, Maddie B. He seems oh, to oppose every every Patriots opinion we have. Yes. Um, which you know, that's fine. There's just different levels to it. There's your of smart course. Patriots fans yeah. and there's and there's Maddie B. And then there's your Matthew P's guys are listening to this to be all pissed off. Um, but I, I don't, I know his rookie season, it started kind of iffy because he had his injuries and whatnot, but he, he played great his rookie year. He almost, really? he had like 900 and something yards, 912 yards or 930 yeah. yards, something like that. And then his second year, he had like 20 less carries, I think. And I only know this because I wrote about it today. Go to couchguysports.com. Check out the blogs, the pods, everything. Liam, you have a podcast, I believe. Another yes, one. I believe on just Coach recorded, Guy. actually. There you did. What's it called again? I forgot. The Rafters podcast. Oh, the Rafters, because it's oh, a Celtics space, pod. Baby. Yeah. Up in the I Raptors. get it. The Rafters yeah. and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The greatest team in, in the NBA. When I yeah, say it I fast, it. people think it's the Raptors podcast. And they're like, Toronto Raptors. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got Toronto fans coming in like, wait, what, <laughs> yeah. what is going on? <laughs> yeah. There's no fans. Fred Van Vliet here. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait, what is it? Jason Tatum? Who is this? <laughs> um, but um, what was that? What was uh, I saying? Oh, yeah. Your article, The Shameless Yeah. Blog. Yeah, yes, you know, just, you know, go to Couch Guy Sports, click on the Patriots tab, take a look at everything. You'll see my name on there, Mike Sullivan, um, but you'll also see everything else. There's a bunch of podcasts, a bunch of different articles, whether you like Patriots, Red Sox, Celtics, Bruin, just overall sports things. CouchGuysports.com, take a look, please. Um, and that. while you're there, you know, listen, listen to this podcast. Maybe you're yeah. listening to us from there, who knows? Um, but Michelle had kind of like an iffy second year. And then last year, you can't really hold last year, you know, against anybody. Um, he averaged five yards per rush, but he only had like 50 rushers or something like that. Like yeah. it was a, it was an iffy thing, but I, I think it's just the fact that he was drafted in the first round. People expected some, uh, I mean, kind of rightly so, but I think people expected like a, a workhorse, you know, amazing Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook type back. But I mean, that's just not, what was going to happen and you feel bad because it's not michelle's fault that he got drafted in the first round um i but, think honestly they got exactly they for taking him in the first round it worked out great not mm -hmm. every running back is like emmett smith where you're going to play 22 years and then you know a strong gust of wind is going to blow his dusty ass down the road and he has to retire like <laughs> you can't expect that every running back has that long tenured career we got sonny michelle in the middle of a time when we really needed like a strong playoff running back and he had huge mm -hmm. touchdowns against the chiefs in the championship game and scored the only touchdown in that rams patriots super bowl and won that game for us without that touchdown people, it's people three forget three that. we missed people the forget field that goal. yeah a hundred percent so if I'm taking somebody in the first round and they're pretty, not heavily, but like they're a strong contribution, like a fairly heavily reason we won a Super Bowl, what more can you ask for? And yes, now, obviously it's three years later and now he's not, we're not, we didn't win a Super Bowl. He hasn't helped us win one since. And in theory, now it certainly doesn't look like he's going to help us win another one. But hey, if I spend a first round pick and get a Super Bowl out of it, so be it. You know, we got fair return i think and uh now I, I think sunny digital's time in new england is kind of waiting toward an end here it definitely is i mean he's been he's been here for three years uh people do forget too in that draft 2018 draft 
Michelle wasn't the only pick the Pats had in the first round. They got Isaiah Wynn too. So, I mean, oh, yeah. kind of like you can kind of just toss Michelle in there. Like, yeah, he's kind of like a bonus. But anyways, like you said, I, yeah, I think he's, his, his time is done. And, you know, I, I hope he does well wherever he goes. I hope he does well this year. Yeah. But back to Stevenson, I want to see him. I don't want it to be like Damian Harris, his first year where he played two games, he had healthy scratch, you know, every other game. And then he showed up the next year. Like I want, I think he can, or just from the little bit that we've seen and heard, I feel like he could come in and, you know, really contribute. And who knows? He's also, you know, injury. He's kind of injury liability. So if someone gets hurt, he's going to have more of them to come in. Um, I don't know. I just want to see him come in and just run the ball. And then, I mean, people say he can catch too. That's awesome because I, I, Damian Harris isn't the best at catching. I mean, you have James White, obviously, but if you got Stevenson back there. Yeah. yeah, Oh yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. I want to see him in there. Um, That's, that's all I know. Um, Other than that though, nothing really of note. Uh, Ronnie Perkins, uh, third round pick did well in the Washington football game, yes. but, um, you know, other than that, he had, uh, he had some sort of like injury scare yeah, and yeah, practice yeah, yeah. this week, but he's good. All, all signs are pointing to him being good. So, um, I don't really want to dwell on that game because that did happen. What feels like a lifetime ago. Um, no, and it's also it? pretty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, as we record this right now, the Patriots will be playing within a half an hour. Yeah. So kind of look forward to that. Any, any take we have at the end of the pod about this Eagles game, let us, you know, laugh at us when we have those takes yeah. wrong. Oh, it's mostly whatever we think. Brutal. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I was thinking, I was like, maybe we record after, but I was like, you know what? We got to get out on time. People want to laugh. That's fine. Mm. Uh, but the kind of the elephant in the room that I, I wanted, I, I know we both really want to talk about, we wanted to get to last week. Stefan Gilmore is still, not under contract and i mean you got the hashtag pay gilmore um all all that going on so it seems like everybody wants him to come here i don't know what's going on um and i know i know it scares you too right (laughs) that he's not here so i don't know it it he's making right now or he's due to make like just over seven seven point nine million or something like that now his cap hit is 16 which is huge so who knows what they're going to do with that do you do you know how severe severely underpaid he is as a corner if you don't know let me know (laughs) i seven million just doesn't sound like a lot yeah so let me just tell you because i have a uh i kind of you know i don't you know the the brain is kind of small big head small brain i don't remember all this so i have it kind of right here um you would say uh xavier and howard you'd say he's a pretty good corner right uh yeah definitely one of the better ones in the league yeah one of the league in picks last year very good player Exactly. I, I think he wants, he wants to trade too, but anyways, yeah, uh, that's okay. not, he's not a Patriots player. So we can get traded wherever the hell he wants. Um, Hopefully the Patriots. He, I'll see that if Gilmore, they're running out of time. Anyways, <laughs> Damian Howard, he is due to make $12.1 million. Oh wow. And Gilmore is better than him. So I would say. Five million more. Huh? Yeah. Let me throw this one at you. Um, where did he go? Marcus Peters. Everybody knows Marcus Peters. Yep, Ball hawk from the Ravens, Chiefs, all that. He yeah. 11.4, pretty much 11.5 million. See, he's definitely not better than Stefan Gilmore. He, he definitely used to be, he used better. to be unbelievable. He used like, to be amazing. He, he's kind of faded off. Yeah. He's Let super me, good. It's hard to be consistent as a corner. He's super good, but not better than Gilmore anyway. No, he's not. He's, he's good. He's just not on that level. James Bradbury. Are you, <laughs> is that a house? Is that a, is that a household name to you? No. The only reason I know James Bradbury is because my buddy's a Giants fan and he, kisses the ground this guy walks on i'm like dude he's not that good one guess how much this this berry boy is making oh, it is God. it is more than gilmore i will tell you that is it more than marcus peters dude is 14 million dollars whoa i was gonna guess fucking 13 oh no not it's 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 ridiculous jalen ramsey's making 17.5 uh yep. he's 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 the highest well actually you got bills uh trey white making 18.2 who's a beast so Gilmore is going to have to fall right in between there. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And the Patriots aren't stupid. I feel like they know that too. So I don't know what's taken so long. Like I know that money is this and that, but man, it's Belichick. He can move the cap. You move some to a signing bonus, do all this fun stuff. Yeah. The worry. And I know what we kind of spoke about it right before we came on. There's a week and a half left or two weeks before the regular season. 
I, what if this doesn't get done? What's what's your confidence level in this uh, defense? Or and also side question: Do you think they'll get the deal done? I or or I renewed. can't imagine they don't get the deal done just because if they don't, then the house is on fire. Then all of a sudden, you know, in my mind, it's like that SpongeBob scene where they're just shredding all the papers and burning everything. <laughs> they're like, "Where is it? Where is it?" Like that's what I, I would yep. happen in my mind if we don't resign <laughs> Stefan Gilmore. So I um, I just I think that time's running out. I don't know why it hasn't got done now. Um, obviously, Kraft's got to cut a check. I, what are we going to trade him? I, our chance was kind of gone. If we, He seemed perfect. Trade him for Julio. The Falcons' defense was shit. They could mm-hmm. use him. We could use Julio. It's made a lot of sense. And then the Titans got Julio yep. for next to nothing. And we obviously didn't make the, that trade. So I figure, hey, all right, we're not trading Stefan Gilmore, so he's going to get paid. And now what? This is like two months later, and he still hasn't got that money. So I'm starting to flip out here. Uh in my mind, there's no scenario where this doesn't get done. The Patriots defense would still be very good without him, mm-hmm. but it is the best defense in the league with him. Maybe not the best scoring defense, oh, yes. but the Patriots always run a bend and not break defense. They will let you get down to the 20. They'll let you get to the goal line. You could, you could huff that goal line paint, <laughs> but you will not get in that end zone. You will not touch that paint in that end zone if that team is there with Stephon Gilmore, and that really worries me. JC Jackson is one of the upcoming great corners in the league. If we have both corners like that, it brings me back to the Revis Brandon Browner days where we just lock it up. And like the possibilities are honestly endless with a defense like that. I mean, you'll have opposing offenses singing Akon the entire game. They'll be like, locked up. They won't let me (laughs) out. It'll be brutal if we can have both of them. You said Akon, and I was like, wait a minute. What what (laughs) song are we thinking of? For some reason, in my head, because the last Akon song I heard was that Bonanza song where it's, hey, ladies, (laughs) drop it down. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? You're like, he's not going to this song, is he? They're like, oh, thank God. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, maybe lonely? But no, yeah, no, that that, that makes sense. don't leave the house with a good Akon reference either but yeah no so I think I'm about 70% confident this deal gets done because if it's not then what the hell are we doing what was it for exactly yeah and and honestly the Pats aren't in the worst cap space problem they got according to the uh what, what he changed his Twitter name now but it's Pat's cap at Pat's cap on Twitter he is the most reliable guy I've ever seen yep. who, who, who knows the guys the who crunch the cap. numbers like that way over he, my, he crunches numbers. I don't even know. There's like a bottom 52 bottom 50 rule. There's so many things he got, but Patriots have $10.9 million. So easily you can restructure people. You can, I don't think that they've restructured high tower yet. If I remember correctly, No, they have you not. can restructure you. There, there's a lot of movement. So they have the room to do it. Like you said, and I'm actually going to take it one further. You said this, this will be a top defense, maybe not top scoring. I think this will be, defense in all aspects the front seven with the rookies are showing promise you get the second year guys coming in you got van noy who's back i love kyle van noy i know everyone I, yeah except for 98.5 the sports hub they do not like him They're i don't know why bunch of grizzly old bastards they hate they, everyone yeah they they hate anybody who has fun um but i think that the front seven is going to be awesome I think your safeties are fine. You got Duggar, McCordy, uh, yep. Phillips. That I'm not worried at all. Uh, speaking of safeties, today is Patrick Chung's birthday. So happy birthday. Newly retired Patrick Chung. Um, I hate you, Patrick anyway, Chung, so I'm not going to wish you a happy birthday. But... Oh, pff, what, what, get, get, you know what? Okay, we'll just we'll pretend <laughs> you didn't say that. Yeah. Um, but no, if, if you do have Gilmore and J.C. Jackson, I mean, Gilmore's going to shut him down. Jackson's going to play good enough to almost shut him down. You would assume, you would hope. And then you just kind of go from there. If he's not there, that's a that's a big hole, like you said. It's like the, it, the house is on fire at that point. I don't think it's doom and gloom, but it's you're, you're definitely, you definitely take a huge step back, I think. Because I don't have, and I don't think anybody does, has too much confidence in the other corners on the roster to kind of step up big time. What Jonathan Jones and all that name doesn't excite me. Juwan Williams might not even make the team. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, like, I mean, do you, do you, like, I don't, I don't know what you do. The easiest thing is just to get Gilmore. So I don't think he has to, like, I don't think practice time is really going to screw with them that much. Um, I think that you could essentially sign him next week. And then have him ready to go, you know, all oh, systems yeah. go. I mean, there's there doesn't seem to be a reason why you wouldn't be able to have that. 
Um, but I don't know. The, the clock is ticking. I would assume, though, I'm going to make a hot take by the next, our next podcast, I think, again, or at the very least, there's going to be serious talks or serious yeah, discussions. Yeah, be a story. You know they, yeah, yeah. It, or or he'll he'll have signed a deal, I think. Yeah. That's that's what I, it, it has to happen. Belichick's too smart. He knows that this is kind of the last year he's going to have Gilmore and Jackson because Jackson's going to get a huge contract soon. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think I think this is the time. This is the time to do it. You have the time to spend money. Um, so I would I would recommend if I were to talk to Bill Belichick, please sign Stefan Gilmore. Do you have any concerns about Gilmore's shelf life? Because as a cornerback, there's usually a very small window where they're really sick. And then it's a huge fall off after that. Like some corners oh, yeah. have prolonged it for as long as they can. Revis hung around a little too late and was pretty shitty toward the end of yeah. it of his yep. career and like i can think of many many cornerbacks who are like that uh like namdi aswa that useless remember fuck. namdi aswa i forgot oh, about God, it. I yep. hit, just saying his name makes me want to put my fist through the wall but um <laughs> yeah so like there are players like that who was unbelievable like arguably the best corner in the league and then boom just like that can't cover a baby with a blanket so do you worry about that with gilmore so gilmore i just had to look it up because i forgot how old he is he's 30 yep. so which is, uh, which is I, not a good number for corners. Not really, no. But the, I'm not as worried because I think this his style of play, like he, his how he plays, he just kind of bodies you up, mans you up, gets his hands on you. He doesn't yes. have to really rely on like the speed or like the ball hawking or anything like that. He just kind of like almost like a Brandon Browner, where except you know not as physical, where it was yep. a flag every play if they wanted to call it. Um, even though they call a bunch of flags on Gilmore, but you take the good with the bad. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I think, I feel like he could still be good for the next three years. Maybe I know that's kind of pushing it, yeah, but I just think time. that the way he plays, like, I, I don't know. I, I think he can kind of prolong it a little bit. Uh, like I said, three, I mean, th- that third year might be, you know, kind of the Brutal. demise you might, you might end up trading him for, you know, I don't know. To, late round pick or something at that point but yeah. i'm not too worried about it um are since you asked are you worried about it i don't know because i look like i said i look at other corners and obviously he plays a different style than most corners i look at richard sherman now who's not on a team he's basically mm. unplayable now last yeah. year on the 49ers he was, was injury riddled he didn't play a ton but when he did he's completely lost all speed that he ever had he, he was getting spun around. He yeah, was he was getting it. outright embarrassed. And how old is Richard Sherman now? He's got to be 34 anyway. I will look it up. Talk amongst yourselves. But um, let me see. So it's just, I don't know. I look at other corners and I'm always somebody that looks at the history to judge. And I see all these other corners who fall off so fast that unfortunately I think Stefan suffers the same fate. So I would be worried because last year he wasn't, great but he wasn't bad he didn't play plenty of games toward the end I know he was kind of out with an injury and then when he was in there he was like you know he missed most of the season when he was in there he was pretty good he got burned a couple of times DK Metcalf roasted he him. did yeah I mean DK Metcalf I mean he's that's he's, a grown man yeah he's yeah he's he's a beast I mean I, uh Sherman's 33 by the way so that kind, yeah, so, so that's kind of exactly, lines up yeah, yeah like what you were saying so yeah I think he, he certainly would be one of the better corners for the next two years, I would say. He could still be a yeah. top 10 corner for the next two years, but then he could literally be a bottom five corner on that third year. And that's they just drop the, off. the fall off is ridiculous. It's it's almost like running backs. Is it running backs? Yes. The age is 30. I feel like maybe corners, it's a little Unless later. you're Frank Gore, then it's, you know, 100. Frank years. Gore. I will tell my kids about <laughs> Frank Gore. Uh, this he i he's one guy i was like dude just come to the patriots for like a year on he, every other division team except for every us. other team he's he, he's one of those old guys like uh like larry fitzgerald i always thought that with him too like dude just come here for one year yeah please. just try it. like just, fucking just try do it for me do it for us do yeah, it for yeah, new england we like want this come on yeah of course there's about do. seven on. states that are all like come join us everybody i know yeah yeah like the weird like cult following like come here come here come drink the kool-aid um no but i i don't know i think i think like you like you said he is gonna fall off quick just because it just seems like that's how the position is um i think yeah he's probably got two maybe three good years left in him so i don't even know what that contract looks like maybe you sign him and i wouldn't be worried if like you said if we sign a three-year deal then i'm like hey five like whatever and then maybe we end up trading him while his value is still high next year or the year after that while his Mm -hmm. value is still good because i figure i hope we keep jc jackson he's gonna get the bag 
I, I think I know he said when they asked him the the headline was JC Jackson dodges question about that he didn't dodge it he just said he wants to play here we're not talking about the contract till after yeah after the season yeah. so I don't know I think if if Jackson go, I don't know if Jackson goes then you almost have to have Gilmore so I see that's the that's the seesaw the give and yeah. take you you almost need Gilmore because you don't know if you're going to have Jackson but you need Jackson at least for so I don't I don't know I think the easiest thing to do would be to just sign Gilmore two years maybe give him like a player option for a third year or something or like a team option for a third year and then just you know kind of go go from there I mean you you have the money to sign him if you want so I think I think you have to make yeah. that move and hey Stefan Gilmore has been one of the best corners of Patriots history so I, I think he more or less warrants he he very well could have won that Super Bowl MVP too so it's the same argument I have for Sonny Michelle we mm-hmm. got everything we need from him and then he won defensive player of the year and he had a pretty good year when he played last year i expect another great year if he stays this year so it's like Mm -hmm. hey ride it out give him the bag and then let him disappear like a football player's long-haired salinger i guess walk out (laughs) walk out into the mist yeah i mean he (laughs) he at the very least he deserves it so i mean he's not asking for anything crazy I mean, who, who knows just the fact that he hasn't put out a statement that he's disgruntled or that he hasn't, that hasn't yeah, there been hasn't been anything like somewhere that, else. which is huge, which is why I think he's yeah. going to stay. If we heard exactly. something like Stefan Gilmore is displeased with the Patriots organization, then I'd be like, fuck this. Yeah, no. And, and you have, you have the Devin McCordy's you have, you know, everybody saying like, yeah, no, I talked to him. He's still, he's still a good guy to have in the room. Like, I'm not worried. Nobody else seems worried. So I think this yeah. might be something that it, these, it might just be taking a little while. And if the players aren't worried, if Belichick's not worried, then I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be worried then, I guess. I'm just going to kind of hope and pray that he comes back. Um, and, you know, the Pats have a top one, top two defense, which I think happens if he does come back. I think so, so too. Yeah. So I do, um, like I mentioned, there is a game against um, the Philly, what the Philly trash team? What's the, what's that? I'm sorry. Oh, I know. Oh, the, I don't. The, the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Listen, sir. Listen, I, I, I think I mentioned this last, last podcast, episode two, that this is episode three. Yeah. Episode three, last episode two. <sighs> Math. Jesus. I don't like Philly. Like I said, they're responsible for the, the third worst sport moment in my life. I will never like them. I think you should, I don't, you, um, you were at a concert last night, so you couldn't hang out, but we were at the, we were doing the fantasy football Twitch stream. I, we had to rank, um, I forget. It was some running back from the Eagles or wide receiver. Or something. Ooh, I was like, no, nope, Philly. Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. Philly, Philly trash. Everything that they touch ah! turns, turns to, turns to, turns to, to, to do, do, to shit. Um, I mean, look, Aguilar shits the bed over there, goes to Vegas, has a great team. Patrick Chung goes there. The Patriots have to reel him back in like a big he fish. He was terrible on the Eagles. And, too. He, he really he was terrible was. on the Patriots. He, he was. He, uh, Carson Wentz, I mean, I don't have the most oh, faith to him. in him. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, walk it to him. Went, I, oh, walk it to him. It's the worst, the nah. worst thing. Uh, but it's um, all about the birds, baby. Hold on, I, I'll even, I'll even give you my emphatic. Oh god, here we go. If if you're watching on YouTube, he's fly goes fly, baby. Oh my god, there's a he did the he did the bird. He did. You know what's funny? I remember Rodney Harrison doing that. Um, after yeah. he picked off Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that? Yep, that was my yeah. favorite quarterback, Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Bitch. Uh, um <laughs> Donovan McNabb was awesome. Anyway, well, hey, no, this is not an idol, Eagles baby. podcast. This is not I have Eagles talked podcast. far too much about the Eagles. Never again. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was terrible. <laughs> Pat's playing the Eagles. This, um, I think we both can agree. This is gonna be the dress rehearsal game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I know um they said expect Cam to start a good amount, probably the first um the first half. And I think I let you have the floor first last time. So I'm going to take the floor first, real quick here. Go for gold. Um Besides the obvious one with Cam Newton, um, I think we all want to see him. Um, I want to see, and this is kind of out of left field, I want to see Devin Asiasi play because he is the only tight end who's going to be playing. Um, He's going to end up playing with, I'm assuming, Cam Newton and Mac Jones. So you can see what rapport he has with either one of them. Um, Like like I mentioned last time, I just – I. I want this guy to be good. He looks like he should be good. So I hope he has a a Ramondre Stevenson type game. 
um, where he just kind of goes off and at least earns a roster spot. That's it. That's, that's all I want. I want to see what he does. And I'm assuming there's going to be schemes. There's going to be actual plays designed. Cause like you said, this is the dress rehearsal game because there's only one more preseason game after this. And you got to assume that's going to be kind of just getting your final looks at fringe players or things like that. Um, but yeah, I would say Devin Asiasi, that's my number one. I, I want to see what he can do. I want to see him block. I want to see him run the right routes. I don't want to see him screw up. Um, I, God, I want to see him have a touchdown. If he gets a touchdown, oh, buddy, I'm getting the exo gun out. I am getting, getting the exo gun out. <laughs> Rapid pulses. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what do you think? What are you, what are you looking for, man? Uh, specifically the wide receivers and not the starters. I'm looking at, like, the, uh, the backups, like guys who could make the team and have an impact. Like, wide receivers are one of the most easily hurt positions in the league. At any point, somebody could body Aguilar over the middle and he could be out for a couple games. Kendrick Bourne, mm-hmm. the same. They are mm-hmm. the most built dudes if they cross that middle. I know Luke Keekley's not in the league anymore, but if he was, he would fold those guys like a Bourne poster. So he I'm sure they're all, oh, it'd be brutal. So, like, I'm looking for a depth here. And I felt bad for Mac Jones last game at times because he just wasn't getting a lot of wide receiver help. Like we talked about earlier, there was that bomb down the left sideline to Christian Wilkinson. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, stunning pass. Mm-hmm. Just couldn't pull through. But that just because that doesn't mean, you know, it leaves a, such a bad taste in my mouth where I hate him either. I just think uh, that there's always kind of diamonds in the rough. Wide receiver is a position where we could get like a Victor Cruz moment where some dude comes out of nowhere, undrafted dude out of UMass and ends up falling. Yeah. So I want somebody, I want to see some plays made at the wide receiver from a name that I'm not exactly familiar with. Like I know all like the, the third, fourth, fifth string wide receivers that are coming up, but I want somebody to just start making plays. They're like, Oh, you know, I think Zuber got cut. So I don't think he's there anymore, but like, uh, I want to, he- I think see- so. Trey Nixon, Trey Nixon is the guy. Yeah, I want to see that. I just I want to hear yeah. somebody's name over and over and over. Here we go with the sexual things. I just want to hear somebody's name over and over and over again. But no, like I want I want somebody say to the pop name. out on my screen. Just say it. But no, I want somebody <laughs> to pop out on my screen. I want somebody to like give Max some valuable help with the second stringers and even Brian Hoyer. Like I need some mm-hmm. sort of receiving presence. Uh, I need to see guys be able to create in space. I want people to make strong lines or moves off the line, get open, have a good release. But uh, I don't know. That that's mostly what I'm looking for is some good wide receiver play because that's not what we got from the starters and the backups last last game. So I want to no. see some improvement there, and of course I want to see Ramondre Stevenson run the fucking ball. Oh, oh him man, and those big tree trunk thighs. Yeah, I want to see got him. that Michael Turner syndrome where each leg is fucking huge. Oh god, each leg is like a torso. Like disgustingly I, large. I want to see. I, I just want to see him go off to it. Yeah, God, I didn't even. I know we just talked about him, but yeah, uh, god, I'm, but, yeah, I'm back so, on the Stevenson train. I'm, I'm excited to see him, but yeah, mostly what I want to see is some wide receiver development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, I will say this. Do you think this is kind of a question I want to spring on you? Is there anything? that cam newton or mac jones could do that could either drop cam newton down or push mac jones ahead of him in this game do you think or do you think and it will we'll dive into this a lot more uh next week but do you think this is that there's anything that can switch their their uh positions on the depth chart in this game short of mac jones going in just having an aaron rogers esque game where he throws mm-hmm. like four to six tubs with like three incompletions and absolutely balls out and cam throws like two picks. Then maybe I see some rumblings, but if cam goes in there and throws a pick and like, doesn't do well and Mac goes in there and only does. Okay. then I think can't, they're both still safe. Cam's still the starter. So I, uh, I think without pet patent pending something crazy, I think it stays mm-hmm. bit virtually the same. I don't expect cam to struggle either. I expect him to go in there and have a solid outing and, keep Mac buried on that bench. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to say the same thing. I, I figured that's where your head was at. I just wanted to see. Um, Cause yeah, I don't think that there's any way that Mac Jones jumps ahead of them. I mean, and I know, God, I've been, I got people coming at me on Twitter at M Sully five, four, three, three shameless little plug again, course, saying yeah, the second, there. the second that I say anything good about Mac Jones, it's like, 
Oh, but no, Cam Newton. This dude, I know. I, I I've seen. Just because I Sorry. like one doesn't mean I hate the other. I'm just more interested in Matt Jones. He is the unknown People quantity. So I know what Cam Newton is. I know yeah. Cam Newton. When he's, that's why if you go to my Twitter again, M Sully five four three three, um, <laughs> you will see on there my pinned tweet. It says, "Just because I or, no, it says something like I like Cam Newton. I want him to start just because <laughs> I compliment Mac Jones." doesn't mean I don't want that. So yeah. I, I do want to see, I want to see them both do well. Um, I want to see Cam kind of shut up the actual haters, not yes. the, not the me's out there. Like the people that for some ungodly reason are rooting for him to fail. I want to see him do well. I don't want to see him throw any bad picks. Um, I, I don't want to see him fumble. I don't care if he get, if he, you know, we have a chase young moment where, you know, someone blows through the line, blows through, blows through the line and ends up, you know, um, <laughs> It ends up taking him out, RKO out of nowhere. I just want to see Cam Newton have a good, solid game. Yeah, that's it. And then, and then if that's the case, do play him for like one drive next week, and then have Mac and Brian Hoyer. That's it. Hundred percent. I, I yeah. want to see Cam in the end zone. I want to see Cam get a rushing tub. I want to see Cam get a pass mm-hmm. tub. I'll take one of either, but I would love. I would get real excited about both. I want to see a big a. a Big long running touchdown. That's what yeah, I want to see. Wow. I want to see one of those where Vaney, he's he Vaney running. Touchdown. Oh yeah, you know he's busting through. He's got you know it's like you know yeah you, you know there's a maybe maybe there's a little curve in there somewhere. He he kind of goes left Cuts or right. Back. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how I could throw that in there, but we got it. In. We got it. In. Yep. Um, Seamless. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> Seamless. Yeah. So either way, I think that this game is going to be interesting to watch. Um, I don't give a shit who wins. Um, I want to see the defense play well too. That's really it. I just want to see, because this is going to be more of like a game like thing. So Cam Newton, Devin Asiasi, Stevenson, and the second, third, fourth kind of unknown receivers. That's who we're looking for, right? Holy shit. I just had a spider on my face. I am terrified of spiders. That's, that's a, a little, little, just, little unknown fact. Oh, I felt something squish against my face. And I think I have blood on me. That's great. Yeah, no, see, if it, yeah, oh, you would know if there was a spider that dropped down from the heavens or from hell, dropped up from hell because they're demon creatures. Yeah, I would oh forget. God. There was, I, I was driving a couple of days ago, one dropped from the ceiling right on my Scream. steering wheel, right on the steering wheel. Thank God. It, it, it was like really early in the morning. Thank God my hand wasn't there. I saw, I didn't know what to do, killed it really quick. I was like, ah, yeah, <laughs> just reaction. <laughs> oh, real quick. It was crazy. I thought the steering wheel was going to pop off. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't know what's going on with my camera. There's, I need a better camera. I'm, I'm yeah, going to yeah. invest in that this weekend. Yeah, I, I know. I need to be able to see your beautiful face. And, dude, uh, I'm eight, white, but eight, I'm not. Eight, what is I'm it? 160 eight. HP or whatever it's called? I think the so, best definition. Like I want to be able to see the hairs on that beard. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure, oh, by the way, little sneak, sneak peek, depending on how the, depending on what's going on, maybe next week, maybe week one, I think we both, we have a little, a little tease. I think maybe we both show some skin and do a shirtless podcast. Very down, very down. I think Rocking so. the toga right now, but I, I saw, I was going to say, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, he, he looks like a, like a, like a Boston Tarzan. I don't know how else to explain. Toga. Look at that. Look at that. I can't stand yeah. up because I have a broken leg toga. Oh, yeah. See, my look at it. He's working hurt, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why I'm no. looking around like there's people like I'm talking to. People, you see do that? You see this? No one do answers. You see? Shit. Are you not entertained? I was just about to say that. I know you were. <laughs> I know. I know. See, look at that. Look at that. It's I only my three pods were already in each right other's there. minds. Son of a bitch. Um, so yeah, I am in, I, I want to go watch the Patriots game. I know that you do as, as do well. I. So, um, guys, ladies and gentlemen, everybody listening, thank you again. Uh, episode three, we will be back next week for episode four, for episode four. Look at that. Um, alliteration. That's not alliteration. alliteration no, but- <laughs> Anyways, though, uh, Mike Sullivan, Liam McDade, see you next time. Let's go Patriots. Pats.